can I talk to the idea of where lack of abundance comes from, the idea of that, right? The beginning of existence? Well, there's never ever been lack. So in that sense, it has never been created. It's only been created in our collective, in our society. And there's other societies that generate some version of that. But our civilization has been um, the prime creator of the idea of lack. It doesn't actually exist. It's an idea in our collective mind. So I can only talk about, I cannot talk about how lack was created in existence because it never was. I can only talk about how lack was created in our minds. Does that make sense? What function does it serve? It functions, this, it serves the function of, um, of giving us an experience of something that does not actually exist. So it gives, it gives the creator the ability to experience itself in an illusory way, which is actually highly beneficial. It's, it's, uh, it teaches it a lot, that it cannot teach itself in its clear, non-physical states of consciousness. So it generates a physical reality, and it generates a body that is seemingly stuck in physical reality. And then based on those perception, based on those perceptions, it, it starts to reference its circumstances in the form of a human being and circumstances, and it sees, hey, if I take this apple away from you, you don't have an apple, I do. You're lacking, I don't. In energy, in terms of creation, in terms of consciousness, there is an apple in their hand, there's an apple in your hand, and there is infinite apples between these apples because there's infinite parallel realities. But we don't perceive that on a physical level, and so we can generate, we can play out the idea, the illusion of lack, and generate the experiences that are generated when a consciousness believes in the idea that lack can actually exist, which feels terrible because it's the only thing that cannot exist. Everything in existence can exist except for lack. It's the antichrist. It's the anti-thought. It's the anti-existence idea. Literally, that's what it is, a lack. Lack implies that there's a lack of what? Lack of existence in a particular form, which is still existence. So you're saying that existence can cease to exist. And existence goes, oh, wait a second, that's impossible. Here, I'll make you feel really bad when you believe that. That's what happens when we believe in lack. When we suffer, it's some form of believing lack can exist. That's why we feel bad, because it's so not true. And the frequency, again, that inundation of the true frequency of our higher self, which is rooted in the universal truths of existence, will let us know that it's out of vibrational alignment. And so we constantly feel bad because we have so many adopted ideas about lack. Lack of love, lack of existence, lack of the things we want to get, lack of integrity, lack of all these things. We generated the idea as a as a species, as a civilization, as a physical consciousness, physically focused consciousness. And what? Why does... Why does who? Exist? Let's start with that. Well, Why does who or what? A name that is. So you're talking on an, are you talking on a more absolute level or are you talking on an individual human level? Are you talking about why did existence generate this in general? The illusion of lack or why does a human being generate it no existence created the human being yes to start with why did it even create the human oh being? because that's fun <clears throat> i know this it's is meant what to be richard fun, box least. said years ago at the edgar casey foundation <laughs> it's meant to be fun. fun it's it's a play it's right what's fun it's a way then? to it's a way to make an idea as dense as you can possibly make it, which is what we call physical reality or the physical state of energy or the physical state of consciousness. It's nothing more but imagination, but looped on top of itself over and over again, like a spider web crossing its own lines so often that it becomes dense and physical, where in its first original state, it's just a very thin, hardly visible, very flexible, very malleable line. But as soon as it starts crossing its own path, as soon as non-physical energy starts crossing over itself over and over and over and over again, it starts to slow down. Similar to when H2O slows down and it turns into ice. And when it starts to speed up its frequency, it turns into steam and it can move everywhere it wants to move. But when it's ice, it can't do anything. You can just look around and see how it's lacking movement. I can't move. What the fuck? I feel really bad. 
But when it's steam, it can't move. Similarly, non-physical consciousness, non-physical eyes. Sorry, what? <laughs> non-physical, non-physical so consciousness, non-physical energy. N- your true being, your tr- your higher self in that sense. People call it your higher self sometimes, or your soul. It's free. It's free to move in consciousness. It can be anywhere in any form it wants so to be at any given moment. So when it vaporizes. When, when what vapor? H- like yes. When you die, you mean? You well. say. <laughs> When you physically die, or when the idea of limitation vaporizes, and you free yourself mentally, energetically. You were saying when you, when it solidifies versus when it melts. Yes, physical reality is solidified, yeah, non-physical and it, or energy. Yeah, ev- evaporates, and it's everywhere. That concept. Sorry, I uh, can't. No, 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 that's good. So yes. Where, so well as you did. That's right. With the physical terms, or okay. the you know it's okay. chemical I'll take it terms. Easy. Okay, so when you're when it's when it's out everywhere, yes, melted, yes, could it manifest in France yes. two days ago and like reverse the t- difficulty there? <laughs> reverse the difficulty? I mean, or the presumed illusion of people actually getting shot and you know. Like oh. Um, <laughs> well, there's parallel infinite realities. From its own point of view, it doesn't have to ever go back and change something because the reality where nobody was shot already exists. So it can simply experience that reality parallel to the one where everyone is shot. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Cool. So then, the idea of going back to change the reality, again, is similar to like trying to fix a trauma. The trauma is meant to be the trauma on its own level. That's one way in which infinity can express itself. So why would you meddle with that? Why would you say this portion of, of, of expressing infinity should not be here? Why would you make infinity's expression of itself less complete? Why take away the shootings? Shootings are fun. See, I mean, it seems There's parallel realities. It seems uncomfortable, let's put it that way. To, to what? To your, to your to ideas. To the person that's getting shot. To the know, person that's I mean, getting shot. But maybe they're in the wrong frame of mind to be shot, and they could just be, okay, I'm going to be shot. Or they, or, they be shot. or they might wish to experience that experience. That's why they're experiencing it. On some level, they might wish to experience that because it's a valuable learning experience. Does that make sense? For their next life? For their next, no, not necessarily, just for consciousness. Consciousness doesn't necessarily think so much in next lives. We do that from a linear point of view. But it learns immediately as soon as it dies. It learn, you learn right now. You learn, you're, you're adding to your consciousness, to your soul's conscious awareness of itself and to its expression of itself with every single experience you have. Now, the more consciously you approach your everyday life and you use the catalyst, the challenges that happen, that you create for yourself, the more you learn, the faster you move, the more you condense the idea of time, the more non-physical you become, in a sense, in your energy, in your state of being, in your consciousness. The more flexible, the more steam-like you become, and you become less like eyes, less blindfolded, more wide open, wide awake seeing multiple things simultaneously, like consciousness does. Consciousness sees all things simultaneously. But you're still manifest. Who? Be as specific as you can be. You, me. Yes. So, what does that mean or prove for you? Or how does that lead into a question? Earlier when you were explaining that the is manifest itself to for whatever purpose. Can you speak into the microphone? Thank you. The is manifest itself for whatever purpose. Yes. So it doesn't need it doesn't need to exist, it just does it for fun. So it just does Well it always exists. I mean it doesn't need to exist okay, physically. Okay, Ben Hinder. What's fun? <laughs> what's fun? Yes. What's fun? To die. To, to be shot is fun. Depending on your angle on it, depending on your perspective on it, to have a happy life and to live a married life as an Amer- average American with a good income and a good house, only moving once in your life, that's a good life too. That's fun too. Being a butterfly, 
That's fun too. Being a five-legged purple creature in a spacesuit exploring planets is fun too. There's all these different infinite realities. There's all these ways in which infinity can express itself. All the ways in which it can and it will, sort of like Murphy's Law, whatever can happen will happen. And in my terminology, that would be said as anything that can happen has already happened or is happening now. So there will always be this expression of being physical. Even when each new thing is completely unique every moment. Yes, that's true. Not every moment, but every expression within the same one moment. The one moment is yeah, timeless. Every, you okay, see. right. Every expression within the same moment. Yes. Every expression is not new, but your relationship to that expression is new. This conversation already existed a million years ago. It already existed before this particular universe was created. We already had this conversation. What's new is the way we're relating to this particular configuration of energy that we are now moving our consciousness into and having a seemingly consensus reality experience that gives us some kind of connection, some kind of relationship to the structure that already existed. Again, you have to think in terms of timelessness. I know that's hard to do sometimes, but it's fun. Too. That's fun. That's one thing that's really fun. It's to start to see as existence sees from a timeless point of view. To start to become more nonlinear in your way of seeing life. And then you realize that everything already exists. And you can never create a new experience. You, well, you can't create a new experience, but you can't create a new molecular structure. You can't create a new configuration of a universe. Every single nanosecond is a parallel coexistent complete universe in and of itself, but all potential parallel re realities already exist. Because from a timeless point of view, everything that can exist will exist. And therefore it already does exist. So the structure of existence, meaning you having your particular body configuration over there and mine being over here within this space, within the location we call Boulder on planet Earth in this particular space time reality already existed a billion years ago. What's new is the fact that you are generating an experience out of that as we speak. You're building a new relationship from the one to the one, from existence to existence. From the one, the, the infinite one, to the infinite one. By being the infinite one in a certain way. How you respond to this moment, how you create a relationship to this moment, those are infinite ways. So in a sense you could say, Infinity expresses itself in manifest form and the number of realities are infinite times infinite. The first infinite is there's infinite configurations of energy that can exist, infinite universes that can exist, where even a single atom in all of creation is different. That's one parallel reality expression. Does that make sense? And another, and another, and another. There's infinite structural realities, which can then times infinite ways to relating to each one of those infinite portions of creation or parallel slices of creation. So the way you respond to this moment, you can respond to this moment in infinite ways. And this is just one moment out of infinite moments. So infinity is expressing itself in creation, in the form of creation, by creating infinite structural forms that can then interact with each other in infinite ways. And that's why we're having this journey, because it never ends, because there is, you know, infinite times infinite, you can do the math. It takes a while to explore. <laughs> and so we're exploring this new relationship that's never before been approached in quite this way, even though structurally we already existed a billion years ago. In this way, in this form. Does that make sense? Sort of. That's a word. Sorry? Sense. <laughs> is a word. Can you, does it help you at all in any way? Does it give you insight? It helps a word to with insight. I mean, do you, do you understand the question? Benteno, obviously what you're saying is beyond any words. Yes, but I just use words and so we yeah. communicate and I ask you the question, does it make sense? Or does it help you? It, it makes me even wonder how I can talk or how I can think or how I know what cool. words mean. Can, can you hold the microphone? Oh, sorry. Yes. It makes me think 
that makes you think. I don't, how do I even know how I can talk, how I can think, how I formulated a How word, do you do that in I, your dreams? Do you know? You don't have ears. You don't have a nose. You don't have an actual physical mouth. You don't have all these physical senses in your dream, and yet you hear, you see, you taste, you interact, you speak. How do you do that? You intuit, for lack of a better word. Yeah, you generate. You generate energy. You generate patterns that then appear to be something. You're generating speech. It just appears as an appearance, as a possible configuration of energy inside of consciousness. And then you hear what I'm saying, and then that's another perception of consciousness. Does that make sense? I know that's a word, but does it make sense? <laughs> Thank you for appreciating that. <laughs> yeah.